Elijah foreseeing that shadow of Christ, knowing that this meal represented him, which he was the wave offering, the, the heave offering and the meal offering and all the offerings pertain to Christ. So he got the meal, which was ground the same and threw it in the pot the same yesterday, today and forever. And as sure as Christ taken the place of death in that pot and brought life. So will he today when he's taken up on the basis that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever will change death to life every time. Now, and then they went up to this school. And then Elijah said to Elisha, you tarry here because I'm going to Jordan. You notice there was three stages of that journey. One of them to Gilgal, other than from there on up to, to, to the school of the prophet. And the next one was down to Jordan. Now, Jordan was his last place, the last time that he had to watch. That represents the church ages we come through. The first, from Gilgal, after the church come out of dark ages, it come through the Lutheran Reformation. The second stage of it come through what they call the second blessing or the second work of grace, sanctification through John Wesley. Then we come down to Jordan, died out and got the Holy Ghost after that. Now, crossed over. And after Elijah had crossed over Got over on the other side. He said to the young prophet. And them two prophets represented perfectly Christ and the church. Elijah going away, leaving the authority with the church. Was a type of Christ going away, leaving the authority with the church. But the church had to come through Lutheran age, through Methodist age, through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Die out to self in order to receive the blessing. Now they cross the Jordan. And they're going up the hill. Elisha turns around and said, What would you that I do for you? Seeing that you've been patient to follow me from every place and won't turn back, you're determined to go on. Elisha says, That a double portion of your spirit might come up on me. That's the way to ask. And ask plenty. So God likes to give it that way. Just a little. The trouble people say, I, I ask the Father so much. Oh my don't be scared to ask him. Ask just all you can ask. He likes to give you just as much as you got faith to receive. He won't run out. God's got plenty of blessings. <laughs> Could you imagine a little fish about that long out in the middle of the ocean saying, I better drink of this water sparingly. I might run out someday. <laughs> oh, my. That, well, my, that's nothing compared with what the blessings God's got for you. Could you imagine a little mouse under the great garners of Egypt saying, I just better eat a few grains each day because it might not last through the winter. <laughs> Why, well, I could never eat it in a thousand lifetimes. Neither could you offsurp the blessings that God's got laid up from you if you live 10 million years here on earth. There'll still be plenty of blessings for you, lad. Amen. For he is the inexhaustible fountain of life. When you plant yourself in him by this fountain, it's like the tree that's planted by the rivers of water. How glorious and how he likes to push forth his blessings to his people and give to them abundantly. This prophet going up, he said, I want a double portion of your spirit. He said, you've asked a hard thing, but keep watching me. And if you see me when I go, then it'll come up on you. Now, uh, could you imagine after that blessing being promised, this young preacher, how he kept his eyes right on Elijah. I tell you, if somebody said, look over here, Elijah, or some noise happened over here. Elisha kept his eyes right on Elijah. He wanted that double potion. And if you want that double potion tonight, keep your eyes on Jesus. And don't pay attention to what the devil says and what the critic says and what the unbeliever says. Keep your eyes set on Calvary. He said, Lord, you promised it. 